Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg, and today I assist Bernard as he makes green sour apple candy. And we learn about how different acids affect the flavor of candy. Bernard takes the pot of hot sugar and pours it on the candy cooling table. This table is water-cooled and will bring the candy down really fast, which is important to do in a commercial environment like ours. It makes working with the candy a whole lot faster and a whole lot easier for us to do. The candy is about 310 degrees at this point, so it ends up being exceptionally tasty napalm. The apple flavor has already been added to the pot. In most cases, the color has little to do with the candy's flavor. We actually discuss this extensively in our video number 73 about our madness candy. In this case, the color of the sugar, the amber, remains the amber and does not turn green or red because of the apple flavoring. The white powder the Bernard is applying to the candy kind of looks like more sugar, but that entire liquid is sugar. What he's adding now is acid. Normally we work with citric acid, and there's primarily citric acid in red apples. But what gives the unique tart flavor to green apples is malic acid. And we've been working with malic on another project, so we had a whole bunch of it in the shop, and that inspired us to make this green apple candy. Malic has a few strange properties. One, it's more sour than citric acid. Two, it has a different aftertaste or back-of-the-mouth flavor. But most importantly, besides it being sour, it takes longer for you to sense the sour. And that's where the citric acid comes in. We had to find a good blend of citric acid and malic acid to balance the flavor of this green apple candy to be very similar and reminiscent to what green apples actually taste like because they have both acids in them. The red sweeter apples have more citric acid and very little malic acid, and this allows the sugar to come through clearer and make them a sweeter apple. Bernard chose to use some white food coloring in this candy, but he also got a little bit of green in the amber which we're gonna make white. Now you may ask, how are we gonna make it white? Well, we're gonna put it on our candy puller. Sometimes we do this on the hook, for larger batches, we do it on the candy pulling machine. And the candy pulling machine folds the candy dozens of times, each time adding millions of air bubbles. And each of the air bubbles reflect light. If we have a tiny bit of food coloring in there, it really doesn't matter. It'll be distributed so evenly and the white will be reflected so brightly, you'll never notice. But later on, you'll see we'll get a medium level green with pulled candy. And that was done by having a whole lot of food coloring in it before we pulled it. If you want to try this candy for yourself, you can go to our website, www.pd.net, and you can get this candy and a whole lot more there. So go and check it out. There's a link in the eye above this video, and there's a link in the description of the video. Bernard had green clear candy and he pulled some of it to make this light green that's gonna be the center of the apple. And he made a cylinder out of it and he gave it to me to keep it round because if I don't keep on rolling it, it will go flat under its own weight. Bernard will be making a wrap for this candy out of transparent green that will be darker. It's like drawing an outline in a picture and then coloring it in in a lighter shade. I'm holding the lighter shade, he's doing the outline. The bottom of an apple has an indention, but we've made a round apple. So what Bernard has here is a little V of white candy that he's cooled down until it's very hard. And he's gonna put this in the bottom of the roll and that's gonna make the indent. It will eventually warm up to be the same temperature as the rest of the candy, so it'll pull out nicely into the individual images. While I'm assisting keeping the candy round, Bernard is making the leaves for the apple, 
and he's decided that two leaves are the things to do. To the right of the image, you see a thin piece of brown candy. That'll eventually be the stem. As Bernard puts the leaves on the candy and adds the white wrap that we need to make the whole thing stand out, let me tell you about our new project. Somebody challenged me a few years ago, and I've gotten multiple ones like this, to see if we could bring back a specific, very sour tangerine candy that was discontinued about 11 years ago. It came in a tin and it was very good and it shall remain nameless. And the malic acid has been part of the experiments to do a clean room environment redevelopment of this flavor. If you want to find out more, listen to our podcast, which you can get wherever podcasts are downloaded, under the name Lofty Pursuits. And we've been building new equipment, something called the panning machine, to make this happen. It hasn't happened yet, and it might not be a success, but we have been working really hard in developing a flavor that's been lost for the past decade. One of the wonderful things about being a candy maker is never to waste anything. Bernard here is making an outer wrap with the leftover colors from the candy. Because if you make too little, it often causes a problem. But if you make a little too much, well, you get a really cool striped wrap. Now that Bernard has made it into a log of candy, he needs to get into smaller bite-sized pieces, and he does this by drawing it down into individual rods on the batch roller. And then from those rods, we cut them into bite-sized pieces. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe to us here on YouTube. And when you do, ring the alerts bell so that you get notifications every time we come up with a new video. You can also listen to our weekly podcast wherever podcasts can be found or by clicking the podcast button at our website, www.pd.net. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for updates about what's going on at the store and, of course, what candy we're making and what projects we're doing. And sometimes, just sometimes on our podcast, we invite our listeners to become beta tasters and they get free samples of candy and give us their feedback to help us develop some of these cool flavors that you know. And if you want to help us make this podcast, please support us at patreon.com slash lofty pursuits. Now we get to cut them into bite-sized pieces, and we do this on our canvas. And now let's look at how the final image came out. I think it's great. If you want to try this for yourself and try us working with malic acid, please go to our website, www.pd.net, and you can order some for yourself. If you ever were in Tallahassee, we're right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10. If you're driving through, we're only a few minutes from the exit. Please come and visit. We don't make candy all the time, but we do make it a lot. And you may catch us making candy. And if you don't, you can enjoy our amazing breakfast, lunch, dinner, and ice cream. And this is all in the middle of the Lofty Pursuits toy store. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.